West Antarctica's Doomsday Glacier has been found cracking up at alarming speeds, and now scientists say that if we don't reduce greenhouse gas emissions, we could see the same trend cause massive sea level rises by the end of this millennium. Here's the nightmare scenario. Antarctic ice sheet melting could increase sea levels by over 5 meters by the year 3000 if current warming trends continue, according to a Journal of Glaciology study. The ice sheet's sea level contribution without reductions in emissions of greenhouse gases has already been assessed as rising between 7.8 and 30 centimeters by 2100. And now further simulations of mass ice loss show that by the year 3000, a continuation of current climate conditions would produce between 1.5 to 5.4 meters of increase. Such rises would make large areas of densely populated coastal land uninhabitable, while reducing emissions could allow for a rise of only 0.13 to 0.32 meters. The main mechanism behind the worst-case scenario rise is the potential collapse of the West Antarctic ice sheet, according to a study press release on Eureka Alert. The sheet is grounded on a bed that is mostly well below sea level, meaning ocean currents can deliver warm water to the area where the ice attaches to the bed. NASA's website explains this is the first step in a potential chain reaction where ocean heat eats away at the ice, the grounding line retreats inland, and ice shelves lose mass. When ice shelves lose mass, they can no longer hold back inland glaciers, so those glaciers can accelerate toward the ocean and thin as a result of that acceleration. This process then causes more acceleration and more thinning, and as more ice flows to the sea every year, sea levels rise. The U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration says sea levels have already risen between 21 to 24 centimeters since 1880, and the rate has more than doubled from 1.4 millimeters per year throughout most of the 20th century to 3.6 millimeters per year from 2006 to 2015. Meanwhile, a recent presentation at a meeting of the American Geophysical Union, cited by the BBC, said the Thwaites Eastern Ice Shelf, which acts as a dam to slow the flow of ice off West Antarctica into the ocean, has a series of fractures spanning almost the entire shelf that could break it up within five years. The shelf sits at the front of one-third of the massive Thwaites Glacier, forebodingly known as the Doomsday Glacier, for its capacity to release massive sea level rises should it melt. At the moment, though it is already thinning, the shelf's leading edge is pinned in place by an underwater ridge, which means its ice flow speed is a third of that seen in the glacier's western side. However, the shelf is likely to become uncoupled from the ridge very soon. And even if that doesn't occur, developing fractures in the ice shelf will almost certainly break it up, which will release large sections of the glacier behind it into the ocean. Scientists published a new study in the journal Nature Communications in which they show that Greenland's ice sheet is melting at such a fast pace that it's heightening worldwide flood risks. The study, which was published on Monday, November 1st, also found that the Greenland ice sheet has lost more than 3.5 trillion tons of ice over the past decade, which increased global sea levels by one centimeter. This one ice sheet contains enough ice to raise global sea levels by 6 meters, or 20 feet, and it has been experiencing an increasing number of extreme melting events over the past 40 years. The new research is the first to use satellite data to detect Greenland ice sheet runoff. The satellite images showed significant annual variation in ice melt and showed that heat waves were increasingly a major cause of ice loss above and beyond global temperature increases. In 2012 alone, for example, when changes in atmospheric patterns caused unusually warm air to hover over the ice sheet for weeks, 527 billion tons of ice was lost. The Arctic Ocean has been warming since decades earlier than previous observations would suggest. According to a new study in the journal Science Advances that used marine debris to reconstruct 800 years of data. The study found that the Arctic water's temperature and salinity, or saltiness, remained relatively constant until the early 1900s, but at that point heat and salt transported from the Atlantic Ocean began to increase substantially, possibly chiming with the period in which humans had begun supercharging the atmosphere with carbon dioxide, and thus possibly suggesting the Arctic is more sensitive to greenhouse gases than previously thought, according to study co-author Francesco Muschitiello, who spoke to CNN. The study is clear that the causes of this early Atlantification are not yet fully understood, 
but it does suggest changes in the Atlantic meridional overturning circulation, currents that moderate temperatures in the northern hemisphere could have played a role, and regardless of the specific mechanisms behind it, CNN notes that once rapid warming in the Arctic causes ice to melt, a feedback loop begins, whereby the lack of ice causes even warmer temperatures, because without the bright white sea ice to reflect away the sun's energy, the dark ocean absorbs it as heat. The Antarctic ice shelf is vulnerable to a chain reaction collapse. Here's what you need to know. As melting ice in Antarctica exposes land beneath it, the chain of processes set off may be capable of causing the sheet to collapse, according to a study in Nature Geoscience. Researchers looked at Earth 13 to 17 million years ago, when carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and global temperatures reached levels similar to those experienced by the end of this century, and said when ice sheets melt, the exposed land beneath is less reflective, so local temperatures become warmer. This can drastically alter weather patterns because Antarctic winds usually blow from the continent out to the sea, but if the continent warms up that could be reversed, with winds blowing from the cooler sea to the warmer land. That would bring additional rainfall to the Antarctic, which in turn would cause more fresh water to run into the sea, according to a University of Exeter news release on Eureka Alert. Finally, because fresh water is less dense than salt water, it is less likely to sink and circulate, which means warmer water simply sits on top of the ocean, causing more warming. In line with that explanation, the study found that reductions in the area covered by ice sheets was far more important in creating further ice loss than reductions in ice volume. Because the more land is exposed, the more warming processes are encouraged. The study's lead author explained that, essentially, if more land is exposed in Antarctica, it becomes harder for a large ice sheet to reform. However, when this happened previously, it's possible that favorable orbital positions prevented a collapse. Earth's positioning relative to the Sun caused the ice sheet to advance and retreat, and this altered weather patterns, and helped preserve, rather than melt, the ice in that instance. There is, of course, widespread acceptance that man-made climate change is driving the initial warming in Antarctica, with the National Snow and Ice Data Center in the U.S. noting that the Antarctic Peninsula, which juts out into warmer waters north of Antarctica, has warmed 2.5 degrees Celsius or 4.5 degrees Fahrenheit since 1950, and National Geographic adding that since the early 1990s, Antarctica has lost roughly 3 trillion tons of ice. Earlier this year, though, the University of Reading released the most detailed ever study forecasting the vulnerability of ice shelves surrounding Antarctica to climate change, and it found that a shocking 34% of the area of all Antarctic ice shelves would be at risk of destabilization under 4 degrees Celsius or 39.2 degrees Fahrenheit of global warming. These concerns are mirrored in the Arctic, where last summer the National Snow and Ice Data Center found sea ice shrank to its second lowest ever extent in the 42-year satellite record. As mentioned earlier, that's bad news for the climate, as sea ice helps cool the planet, but the NCIDC added the detail that 80% of the sunlight that strikes sea ice is reflected back into space. At the time, the NSIDC's director, Mark Serez, explained melting ice was caused in part by 100-degree Fahrenheit heat waves in Siberia that occurred in June and massive wildfires in the western United States. Either way, though, the diminishing sea ice is driving polar bears, which depend on it as a platform for hunting seals, to extinction. It also threatens animals like walruses and seals, which use it as a platform for resting and giving birth. NSIDC director Serez told CNN that if the current trajectory continues, there will eventually be no Arctic sea ice in the later summer. Increasingly, studies are demonstrating that these warming and melting processes can have counterintuitive effects too, with NASA saying last year that not only is human-caused climate change rapidly melting Arctic ice and disrupting ocean currents, it could make Western Europe significantly cooler. The study outlined that the Beaufort Gyre is a current that previously kept the Arctic waters cold and protected sea ice. However, the glut of cold fresh water is making the gyre spin stronger and faster, and the natural reversal of the spin's direction has not happened for over 10 years. Researchers say that if the westerly wind guiding the current should reverse its direction, the cold water buildup could be unleashed all at once. The cold tide may well slow down the Atlantic currents that bring warmth to Western Europe. NASA said in its news release that disruptions to the Gulf Stream would have a negative impact on ocean life and the communities that depend on them. Of course, not all of this is our fault, just most of it. An underwater heat blob from the Atlantic, for instance, 
has been found to be exacerbating the warming of the Arctic Ocean and contributing to the rapid disappearance of Arctic sea ice, according to a study published in the journal Nature Climate Change last year. The study showed that the amount of heat transported to the Nordic seas and Arctic Ocean by ocean currents has increased dramatically since 2001. The poleward heat transport has been implicated as one possible cause of the warming of the Arctic Ocean and the rapid disappearance of Arctic sea ice. As warm surface waters travel to regions further north, they lose heat and gain in salinity as fresh water evaporates. When warm Atlantic water reaches the Arctic, it sinks to form a heat blob because the cool fresh water from the Arctic is less salty and thus more buoyant. This facilitates the formation of sea ice over the ocean. However, the increased transmission of heat to northern latitudes could hinder sea ice formation. On a similar note, a more recent study in August found that climate change isn't the only factor melting the giant Thwaites Glacier. Rather, the Earth itself may also be warming the massive block of Antarctic ice, which is colloquially known as the Doomsday Glacier. According to the study, the crust beneath West Antarctica is between 10 to 15 miles, or 17 to 25 kilometers thick, compared with around 25 miles, or 40 kilometers in the east, and this means that substantially more heat from below can access the west than can access the east. The researchers found that a geothermal heat flow of up to 150 milliwatts per square meter can occur beneath the Thwaites Glacier, according to the study's lead author. Ultimately, the temperature on the underside of the glacier is dependent on a number of factors, including whether the ground consists of compact, solid rock, or of meters of water-saturated sediment, according to one of the study's co-authors, Karsten Gohl. It was already known that hidden rivers of relatively warm seawater cutting across the glacier's underbelly, plus the effects of unmitigated climate change, which warms both the air and the ocean, had caused massive melting. However, Gohl, a geophysicist, says that in addition to these factors, large amounts of geothermal heat can lead, among other things, to the bottom of the glacier bed no longer freezing completely or to a constant film of water forming on its surface. Both of these effects can ultimately result in the ice masses sliding more easily over the ground and into the ocean, causing rises in water levels. Of course, this does nothing to absolve us of blame or responsibility and still leaves us with a problem to solve. Alongside the UN's net carbon reduction targets, some people think at this point the situation is so dire that it might require attempts to geoengineer the climate back to a less dangerous state. For instance, scientists in 2019 suggested plans to save Antarctic glaciers and Arctic sea ice by refreezing them. In order to prevent sea level rises that would leave many coastal cities, such as New York, underwater, a study published in Science Advances proposed using 12,000 wind turbines to pump seawater to the surface, turn it into artificial snow, and then pump it onto two glaciers on the west Antarctic coast. According to study co-author Anders Leverman, it would take 7.4 trillion tons of snow over a 10-year period to result in a 2-centimeter drop in sea level, though the artificial snow would weigh the glaciers down and improve stability. As other research suggests, warm water currents may be melting the glaciers from the bottom up. There was also an idea to construct giant sills or underwater mounds to prevent the water from seeping under the ice shelves. While a separate Arctic ice management strategy called for the use of wind-powered pumps to spray water to the surface of sea ice, where it would freeze and thicken the ice cap. For the moment, of course, as these and a number of other geoengineering efforts attempt to get off the ground, it's likely that carbon reduction efforts are our best bet, as the UN's latest climate report focused on. The only other alternative to that is basically watching large parts of our planet fall apart, as we did with the world's largest iceberg through 2020. The world's largest iceberg has broken off an ice shelf in Antarctica, according to the European Space Agency. The iceberg calved from the western side of the Rhone ice shelf into the Weddell Sea. At around 170 kilometers long and 25 kilometers wide, or 105 miles long and 15 miles wide, it is slightly larger than the Spanish island of Mallorca, according to the ESA, and almost four times larger than New York City, according to The Guardian. CNN reports that when this ice melts, it will not lead to a rise in sea levels because it was previously a part of a floating ice shelf rather than resting on land. This in contrast to glaciers or ice sheets, which do cause sea level rises when they melt, as they join the ocean having previously been resting on land. The formation of this particular iceberg is not believed to have been caused by climate change, according to Alex Brisbane, a glaciologist at the British Antarctic Survey, cited by New Scientist. However, considering the ongoing issue of melting ice more generally, which has been linked to climate change, according to The Guardian, CNN notes that if Antarctica's entire ice sheet was to melt, sea levels could rise by almost 190 feet, or 58 meters. 
For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.